Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And in this video, I am going to be going over three tips plus some bonuses on what helped me pass the Hack the Box CBBH Certified Bug Bounty Hunter. I wasn't gonna do this video until I got the actual confirmation as it is still in review today, 12-18-2024. Uh, um, so, you know, I did get nine out of the 10 flags. I originally got eight. I had some issues with my report. Um, pretty much, I guess it was password protected from Sysraptor. Um, so I redid it again. I was able to get one of the boxes that was giving me issues. However, I didn't get flag two because that one was still giving me issues. So I got nine out of 10 flags total on the second attempt. <clears throat> pretty much, I just knocked out the eight, redid my flags on the report um, as far as my screenshots. And then I just did the, um, I think it was uh, flag eight. Uh, yeah, flag eight that I also needed as well. So that gave me nine out of 10 total. Um, so pretty much this is just what helped me for this exam. This exam was not um, anything crazy, no, any kind of trickery. It was straight thorough. However, it wasn't as rough and tough as I thought it was gonna be. Um, that being said, let's just get right into this video. So as you can see, it is still under review. Um, yeah, it's still in review. This is taking a couple more days. What's today? Wednesday. So I turned it in. Uh, actually, no, I turned it in a couple. Well, yeah, I turned it in about the same days. So it should have been. Actually, I turned it in earlier than I did the CPTS. Um, however, it does stay up to 20 days and it is working days. So weekends don't count, um, at least from what they told me. But when I did the CPTS, it was literally three days. And that following morning, I got my notification in the email with all my badges and credibly and all that stuff. Um, and you know, the PDF printout of your shirt and the option to order as well. So that being said, uh, pretty much this just goes through the exam, but this is the area in the exam that shows you, you know, it's under review still just to let you guys know that's where it's at. Uh, however, I'll go down to here. Um, what helped me with this exam? So <clears throat> I got a lot of questions. Um, from LinkedIn and some on YouTube, uh, you know, what, what tips or what, what kind of recommend, recommend as far as help for me, the, the number one thing is, uh, understand and get to know, be familiar with burp suite. I use burp suite. You could use the other tools as well. I also got asked if you could use, uh, what is it? Kaido Kato. I've only downloaded that once and played around with it one day when it was it almost was a year ago, probably on TCM. Um, that's all I have with it. I've never done any kind of um, real testing, see any kind of CTFs, hack the box, try hack me. That, that was the only time I've ever used it. You can use pretty much any tool you want, any tool you create with hack the box certs. Um, so any tool is pretty much good to go as far as for my knowledge uh, that I read. I haven't seen any restrictions on any tools. That being said, what I mean by burp suite is know the tool in and out, know what your capabilities are. Um, and one of the key examples is uh, when you use Burp Suite, make sure that that like perfect example is you're able to exploit a vulnerability, um, SQL injection, make sure you're able to get a SQL injection in there or not make sure, but make sure you understand how to do it, know what it's doing and be able to, uh, to exploit, um, you know, any kind of SQL vulnerabilities. That's, that's number one, knowing, knowing more than just the basic concepts and capabilities of Burp Suite. Now you don't need Burp Suite Pro. I have Burp Suite Pro for work. Um, you do not need it at all, but if you do have it and you're able to get, you know, through the um, through the exam, get uh, at least minimum of eight flags and you wanna get, try to find other more vulnerabilities, bugs, exploits, run different types of exploits with their, their different um, tools you could download or, or extensions from the store go ahead and do it. Uh, by all means, go ahead and do it. Uh, learn, learn the tool, um, you know, as much as you can. And that's probably the biggest thing I could do or, or advice I could give for this exam is, is being able to be multifunctional with Burp Suite or whatever tool you're using. Um, I would like, I just from what I've seen, I don't know every other tool by heart or don't, I'm not an expert in any of the tool, but I would, I, I've just used and utilize Burp and all the other things I've seen as far as my training, uh, other YouTube videos, 
training material is there's pretty much burp suite seems to be the best as far as what you can do with that actual tool so again that's my number one and probably the best tip is be able to be multifunctional with burp suite key example is being able to to do sql injection with burp suite and other you know vulnerabilities as well so that being said, number two, this is probably going to be the easiest one. Um, this is, again, this is coming from, from my experience and what I needed uh, to get on the ball with quick is pay attention to detail. Devil is in the details. So just real quick, search this academy. Let's just say this is the browser, right? I'm going to go HTTP, one, two, three. Uh, let's see. Um, DevOps dot uh, hack the box port five, 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 um, backslash LS. I want to look for something in the root directory, maybe a flag. Um, this ain't going to work. So again, this is what got me brain fart, whatever. Um, I wasn't, I lost track of the details, right? Devil's in the details. So that's pretty much what you got to do is, you know, back to the basics, this stuff, um, cat, you know, whatever, make sure you're paying attention to the actual details. Um, this is, this is key critical because you're going to be doing a lot of fat fingering. Um, you know, you might be in some kind of brain fog, brain freeze with all the stuff, especially if you're new to web. And that's how it hit me. Um, you know, just kind of overthinking it and not taking a step back. I really didn't take that much breaks in this exam, which is not good. Not normal for me as well, especially being, some, I want to say new as far as my first, web, um, you know, web app bug bounty exam. This is what got me. And I would say this because it's not just going to be for, for how to navigate the directories within the URL, but it's going to be for anything. Again, this is just what got me. Um, something else might get you like how you do your responses, your requests in Burp Suite, uh, not paying attention to those details, how to, not changing them correctly. Um, running your search parameter on the top instead of the bottom, you know, stuff like that. Um, that's going to be number two is attention to detail. Number three, being able to utilize chat GPT hack tricks and other tools out there when you can't run your actual tools that I guess I don't want to say that are embedded in us when we do OSCP, PMPT, CBTS, et cetera. We've got our main tools that we establish in our methodologies because those are part of the trainings. When those automated tools fail, how can you run other tools, especially when you don't really know everything, meaning you don't know 90% of the flags, you don't know how to run the different commands. Um, and again, that happened to me. Uh, I forgot how to say the name of the tool, but it's Ar Arugen, Arugen, A-R-U-J-E-N, I think it is. Um, anyway, that helps me find different vulnerabilities and different parameters for SQL. Um, it, for whatever reason, I even did the, the app update that tack Y upgrade, et cetera. This upgrade tack Y, um, nothing worked. Uh, so I pretty much I had to use, utilize chat GPT to give me the correct command. Um, I had an issue with that because what chat GPT does is it automates your responses. So yes, no. So after figuring that out again, I had to go back into chat GPT and have it say, you know, give me the same commands, but make these manual for me to respond manually, um, you know, yes, no, yes, no. That is another thing is being able to navigate outside of the tools that are ingrained in our methodologies or, you know, that are ingrained in our training, being able to find and utilize other tool sets, other blog posts, um, other ex exploits that are out there on GitHub, being able to utilize that into this exam or, or any other exam for that matter, that's gonna be another added tool, tool um, you know, to your, tool belt or skill to your tool belt. Um, those are, those for me are the top three tips that I could give you. Again, this, this exam is straightforward. There's no craziness. There's no, I gotchas or any, you know, trickery. It's just straightforward exam. Um, number four or the, the first bonus one is be prompt and precise with your methodology and your enumeration. Um, do all your main scans uh, and even go extra right in the background. For me, I still ran auto recon in the background. 
um, doing my Go Buster, Ferox Buster, WPS scan after I ran my, you know, pulling all those after I got my main NMAP scans, then hitting it granular with Rust scan and also other NMAP scans. Um, I have the NMAP uh, book and also could get it, you could get it online as well. You don't need the actual book. But just looking at different commands, I mean, I really went through, uh, through this thoroughly. Um, also, you know, I said auto recon, the rust scan stuff, Ferox Buster, Go, Go Buster, Fuzz, um, or Fafuff, uh, WFuzz. I just went down the whole nine running those. And because pretty much what, what you, it's going to give you your entry point. And then you do all your granular scans from what you get from your Nmap scan. Put it that way. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and then you hit each one, um, dig, dirt search, et cetera, the whole nine. Build out your methodology from what you find and then tailor it to what you find as well. You don't have to go down and do everything 100% the same for each one. If you can narrow it down and you understand what ports are open, what services are open, you could tailor your methodology to that. Obviously, each thing you find is going to be different. So you're going to have to change some things here and there if, if that makes sense. You don't want to go and run the same million commands for each time. It's, it's just not going to happen, especially when you have a lot of things running auto on the back end automated, which might even pull up those faster, right? So make sure you get to, to a point, too, to where you understand what services are open, what different um, versions of the CMS, uh, like WordPress, uh, Jenkins, et cetera, that are open, Make sure you, under, uh, you understand how to look on those services and check to see if they're vulnerable or not. And there's exploits, different types of exploits, meaning the same exploit, but you're getting it. You could get that exploit in different ways. MSF console, downloading the actual script from GitHub, being able to change that out. Because if pretty much if it's an MSF console, it's going to be in, there's going to be an exploit, a manual exploit to download in GitHub. So being familiar with that and being able to, um, um, Tailor all those into your methodology and your and your enumeration. That is going to be key for this as well. Um, this is going to be the first main bonus point, and, and actually, this might even be number one uh, above Bird Suite, depending on how you look at it. I didn't put it number one for me because I already have that experience. Um, but someone that's new, especially in the web space or in general, that might be your number one uh, before Burp. The second one, um, second bonus point. Um, because I did, I'll take the hit. I don't think I did it, but whatever. It is what it is. Be precise and triple, quadruple check your report, especially if you have extra time. Make sure all, double check, make sure all your screenshots are on there. I, I recommend using SysRaptor uh, just because it's already laid out. It's pretty much just plug and play. Um, don't be generic or basic or five word sentences with your uh, descriptions of your findings or your, your walkthrough on, on how you pretty much did what you did, got what you got, how you came to the flag or how you came to get the flag. Use chat GPT and tailor it. I always go write me this portion as if it's in an executive uh, level pen test report and just do it that way. Make sure and all, do that for your findings, um, your, your remediations. Do that. Take the time and do it correctly, right? Make sure it, your report is real key for these exams, especially Hack the Box. They are real nitpicky and rightfully so with their reports. Um, secondly, if you're using SysRaptor, 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 or however you want to say it, there's going to be on the right-hand side where it says download. I think it's a above the download, um, it says encryption, right? Or uh, the download button, you're gonna have a code and there's gonna be a ticker saying your encryption to encrypt the, the file. Make sure you unencrypt that before you download the file. Double, triple, quadruple check it. Um, download it on your desktop or wherever it's, and, and just make sure you can open it without it asking for a password. Just double, triple, quadruple check it, especially if you have the time. Um, that is key, because if you did that, uh, like I said, I don't remember doing it, but it's, it, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to cry or complain about it. Um, I just asked a question a couple times and just redid it. Just got my flags and I was able to get one more. So I'll just show you real quick right here. Uh, examiner's review, I failed. And as you can see, I literally redid it the next day. Um, password protected report, right? So again, I'll take the hit on it. Um, just redid it again. And luckily I had an extra retake for the voucher. 
Uh, so that's, that's again, make sure, again, attention, attention to detail on your report is key. And if you're using SysRaptor, which I recommend, highly recommend, I mean, it's just pretty much plug and play. Again, use ChatGPT, White Rabbit, Neo, whatever, to make your, your report at an executive level as far as wording, and also unclick uh, encrypt your report or your file. Uh, I forgot the verbiage that it uses, but an un un unencrypt uh, file or, you know, uncheck the encrypted one. So that being said, that's the video. Those are my three plus two, five tips for passing the CBBH. This, again, this exam is real straight through, straightforward. There is no trickery, no, no try harder nonsense. Um, it is straight, literally out the box. It wasn't as hard as I, I thought it was going to be. Um, so... Yeah, it was really, it was a good exam. It was great. It actually got me to learn more on how to do different things in Burp. Uh, I really liked it. Again, I also liked the training. The only thing I would say, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing, but it's kind of weird. Uh, they had a different type of an API scenario in CPTS, and that was not in here. I figured it'd be reversed. I won't go into much, any more details than that. Nothing bad, but that was just kind of odd. But Anyway, that's it for the video. Um, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let me know uh, if you think there's something I missed or if, if you looked at the exam, if you took it or you know, vice versa. If there's anything different, go ahead and drop it in the comments and we'll chat about it. If there's anything more granular I can get into, um, leave a comment and I'll uh, try to make another video by the end of this week. Uh, that being said, have a good night, everyone, and uh, see you tomorrow.